do students walk out of school more confused about what they want to do when they leave than when they started? This is something I've been thinking about quite a bit because if you look at a lot of the school experiences for many kids, they go from class to class to class and they get to kind of dabble and do a little bit of stuff, but not necessarily really explore their passions, find their purpose. And I thought about this in a conversation I was having today and it reminded me of something I wrote in the innovators mindset about some of my journey learning after school. And here's what I wrote. In 18 years of school as a student, writing paper after paper, I never once saw myself as a writer. But when I finally began to explore my own passions and starting to deepen my own learning, I discovered that I actually enjoy writing. And only after completing a book and almost a thousand blog posts am I starting to see myself as a writer. It is a beautiful feeling that I want my staff and students to experience, hopefully much sooner in their own lives. So do kids actually have that experience where they get to explore things where they start to feel a passion or is school a checklist of something they just kind of want to get through? One of the questions I've been asking for years is when you think of your top academic students, I'm not saying your smartest kids because some of your students who are incredibly brilliant might not be great academically. Those are very different things. If your top academic students could get out of your school as soon as possible, would they? Because if they would, they see school as a checklist, not something as purposeful and meaningful. And we need to create schools that actually help students find that passion where they know what they want to do when they walk out of here. It doesn't mean they always have to do, but do we give them the opportunity or do we confuse them more than when they started? This is something I really thought about as I was talking to the superintendent of Comac Schools, Dr. Jordan Cox. I have the opportunity to actually join them on an upcoming professional learning day. And I'm so excited about this. And some of the things that they're doing in their schools, as I'm listening, I'm like, this is absolutely incredible. And I hope I don't screw things up because they're already on a really incredible path. So you're gonna learn a ton from, uh, from Jordan in this podcast. And one of the things I thought was really important is they're doing some really incredible things, but someone's going to listen to this and say, well, we can't do those incredible things. And my thing is, why not? Why do we always think that we can't do those things? And part of the reason is we kind of see people where they're at at the journey, but we never see how they got there. So I actually asked Jordan to kind of share about how they got to doing some of these incredible things. He shared that in this podcast. It's a wonderful opportunity for me to join them and to learn from them. And I think this is really important for me as someone who works with schools to not just go in and share my ideas, but to learn from these groups as well. And I know you're going to learn a ton from, uh, from, from Dr. Cox in this, in this uh, podcast. I'm excited to join them all. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kroos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am so delighted here today, and I just had a great podcast with Dr. Jordan Cox. He's actually from Comex School, superintendent there. And we are recording this on April 2nd. I will be with you all um, a little bit over a week, April 10th, uh, to connect and learn from you. So we kind of wanted to do this podcast so we can learn a little bit more about each other and hopefully maybe one or two people from Comac might listen to it if we're lucky. So hey, hey, Comac, if any of you are listening, you know, shout out. <laughs> so I mean, I should put like a secret word in here to see like, hey, say the word if you listen to the podcast, right? So maybe I'll throw it in there. But nah, I won't do that. But hey, Jordan's actually a, a superintendent there. Um, he's taught been an administrator. And uh, we just decided we were going to do this before just to kind of like, learn about each other. You know, I can learn from Jordan, kind of see what's going on in Comax because whenever I go out to a district, I think one of the things that's really important to me is I don't just come there to share ideas. I'm trying to learn as well. I'm trying to pick up ideas uh, and connect them. I know there's so many things that we've just had conversations about already that I am hoping other school districts are listening to and say, you know what, we got to be more like Comac. We got to start doing this stuff. So Jordan, I'm pumped to talk to you, but if you, but you know, before we kind of get into things, if you can just tell everyone who you are, what you do today, how you got there, it's a great place to start. Sure. So, um, you know, this is actually my sixth year in Comac. Um, it's uh, about a year and a half year, uh, a little over a year and a half as the superintendent here. I, um, before being the superintendent, I was the assistant super for curriculum and instruction. And then prior to that, I worked for 17 years in a neighboring district, not too far away. 
Um, started as a teacher, building administrator, worked in central office. And I think that, you know, what drives me to be in the position that I'm in is, is it's all about impact. It's, mm -hmm. it's about relationships. And I think that at a building level, you realize the impact you have on that building. When you start to work in central office, you realize the impact that you have on an entire district. And I think that some of the things that we're doing in Comac are cutting edge um, that we've been, you know, sort of really breaking ground just only the last few years. And we're really ex excited about it and kind of transforming what the traditional educational experience used to look like to uh, to something where, you know, students are able to connect what they learn to real life, you know, experiences. You know, one of the things that you talked about before and I thought was really interesting because um, most people agree with it, but I don't know if we necessarily say it out loud is that, yeah, like we, there's students that are there, their goal is to get to college, you know, their family's goal is they want their kids to go to college. And, you know, I understand that. And we never want to cross that, but, but it's not the only path to success. And especially in our world today, you know, more and more people are finding success outside of going to college. So how have you like kind of emphasized that in Comac too, that this is not the only path, like this is not the only path for kids because, you know, some of these districts, no matter what you show them, what you talk about, it's like, I don't care, college. It's gotta be college or else, right? But you're kind of taking a, a different route saying like, yeah, we wanna make sure that door is open, but it's not the only door that kids can go through. So how, like, how have you kind of emphasized that in the work there at Coma? I think you said something, George, that's really important is that they have that door open. I think that, you know, sort of our role in education is to, try and um, educate our students on all the doors that they have open or even create new ones that don't exist. And so one of the things that we've done here, I mean, clearly our community, you know, 96% of our students graduate from Comac and, and go to college. But there's one of the things that makes us special and unique is that our high school, there's something for everybody. Mm -hmm. So if a student wants to, you know, go the sort of Wilson Tech vocational training, you know, if it, whether it's, um, you know, through drone technology or learning to fly a plane or carpentry or fashion or culinary, you know, those opportunities exist. But the, I think the, one of the things that we've done, we've, we have a very clear educational continuum that starts with the foundation of success in our elementary all the way through our high school. And it has been laser focused on preparing students academically to not only try on college level learning, mm -hmm. but many of the students that leave from Comac, we have 77% of our seniors that are graduating this year have taken five or more college level courses. And in the past, when we talk college level courses, people think AP, IB, but what we've done here in Comac is we've created relationships with colleges and universities so that students that are taking, it could be sculpture and ceramics, it could be band, orchestra, chorus, mm -hmm. anatomy and physiology, the total spectrum of electives that we have in here, students can, can get college level credit. Um, it help, certainly helps them financially, um, but I think a stat uh, that I'm really proud of is, you know, the number of, the percentage of students, uh, students who are graduating with an IEP, classified special education, just about 20% of them have taken five or more college level courses. And the reason why every student in Comac is able to meet with success with college level courses or their coursework is because they're able to connect with it. It's the relationship that they have with their coursework. It's of interest of them. They're able to connect what they're learning to the outside world. And so those are some of the things. And the way we've done that is we've clustered some of our courses together here in Comac to say, if you take these courses, they will better prepare you for a career in health sciences, business administration, fine arts, um, uh, eventually school law. So we have a number of different pathways um, in our high school that students can that students can take. Um, so there's really something for everybody. And next year, one of the things that we're doing a little bit differently is we're actually going to create distinct schools within our high school. So next year, there's going to be a school of business, a school of law, a school of education, a school of um, engineering and applied sciences. There will be a school of liberal studies. And it's kind of like, you know, not everybody knows what they want to do. So for those students that don't, that's perfectly okay. They would fall into the school of liberal studies and we'd be able to target and kind of find what their interests are and what opportunities exist and, um, and connect them with that. So obviously the, the specific schools um, kind of, you know, speak for themselves, but there's so many different careers that exist in there and students realize maybe I thought I wanted to be an educator, but I went into the school of education got to do an internship in one of our elementary schools and right. realized within 10 seconds, I never want to be in a classroom, which is right. a valuable experience, right? Way better to do that earlier than too late. Cause then you're like, I'm gonna, I, I've already college. put in four years. So I'm going, even though I hate kids, right? It's probably not the best thing. So what, what makes it unique too, is that, and, uh, and, uh, and with this is that the, the schools within the high school, 
does not necessarily mean that you have to take that coursework that is required. It's it's really there's a level of programming that goes with it. So if you're in the School of Engineering, we'll bring in professionals that are in those different careers to come in and talk to you. We'll bring in some college admissions counselors to talk to you about what does that pathway look like? What's the commitment in terms of education? And so there's really you know something that we're really proud of here in Comac is that there's there's something for everybody. So you know, like the, I and you know. I'm, I think I'm a little bit older than you just based on our sports conversation before. You don't know any of the guys who lived there anyways that played hockey. Ice hockey, I'll say to you just in case, right? Because I don't want you to get mixed up with field hockey. I don't know if that's a thing there. But um, I, I think when we went to school, and we're probably not that far off in age, is most people walked, most kids walk out of school confused. Mm-hmm. right? And I And I think it's like, we don't, it's almost, we do that to them, but here it's like, you're helping them find that pathway to success that we talked about before by getting them to actually experience these things, as opposed to, you gotta take a little bit of this, take a little bit of this. And like, you know, most of us, when we walked over, we're like, I have no idea what I want to do. And it's, and it's almost things got worse. Like it took me until my thirties to kind of really figure out what I like doing while I was doing a job. I wasn't sure if I like doing, do you know what I mean? I think right. yeah. that's a really powerful thing. So th- one of the things that I'm, really passionate about is this idea that there's every every school that says we want to do this but i'm like well this school is doing that already somebody's already doing the thing that you say you can't do and i i I feel a lot of people are listening to what you're sharing right now and they're like we i would love to do that but and they're giving the excuse so like take take me back like a little bit before this all started what were like some like a, maybe one or two of the roadblocks that you had to overcome and how did you kind of get there to because i didn't i don't think you just said one day like hey we're switching <laughs> and then yep. just switch right there's probably some stuff you had to deal with so like what were some of the things that you had to deal with to kind of get to the the opportunities that kids are having today because of the things you're doing in comac so i think one of the one of the benefits of comac is we're a pretty good sized school we have about 5600 students in our in our district so you know, when you have a larger, a little bit of a larger school district, you can offer more courses. So we've had a robust um, course catalog. But one of the things that I noticed was when we were doing some of our, um, you know, college, college evening or orientation, you know, students were walking up saying, I know I want to do this, but I have no idea, you know, what courses to, to take. And, I, and that's something that really resonated with me, that, you know, we should be able to surface our courses and be able to allow students to be able to make meaning of the courses of the coursework and their learning rather than, you know, thinking to themselves, you know, what do I need to graduate math, science, English, social studies, right. world language, et cetera, um, that they're able to connect with their coursework in a different way. I have to say the staff have been amazing in terms of going out, creating courses, proposing different courses, and that's come from sort of the ground up. You know, yeah. we, this is something we shared with our staff and administration and they've kind of internalized it because they see the value in it. And so I give a lot of credit to them for for really, you know, creating, you know, some of these courses that have meaning, you know, to students and they're able to connect their interest to different careers. Well, you know, like when as I'm listening to you, like you, I think you left part out, it's obviously created meaning for your staff, right? When yeah. they have some the opportunity to, to do this as well, because it's, it's pretty hard to teach stuff you hate. <laughs> but if you actually have some say in it, you have some direction and what you're doing. So like that to me is like, Oh, really? That's incredible because it's going to be way better if, you know, something that you can tell when people are passionate about something, right? And that that connection there. So, like, this is absolutely amazing. I, like, the more I'm talking to you, the more excited. I, also, I'm like, oh, I, I don't want to wreck it. <laughs> don't <laughs> screw anything up. So, uh, hopefully I don't do that. So, this is, this is the last question I have for you. And uh, I was going to ask you before, and I, like, caught myself. I'm like... Uh, do I want to ask this now where it's recording? There's some accountability to this. So I'm going to be there, you know, next week. So for that professional learning time, you and I both know it is there. It's really easy for people to create an experience of like, oh, there's so many other things I could be doing right now. Right. And, it, and it, like, we want to create it like that people see its value. So if that, that day, you know, my time with you is successful, what would that look like to you? Like, how does that look in a way that you're like, wow, that was, that was a great day for our staff. What does that look like to you and for your staff? I think for, I think our ultimate goal when we stand up in front of a, a group of educators is to try and inspire, mm-hmm. right? And I think that 
in my conversations with you just in the short amount of time mm. that some of the things that you've said that have resonated with me are, you know, personal connections, like being able to connect. And I, so I think that not losing sight of, of our purpose and mm -hmm. why we're here. Um, I've used examples where people will come up and they'll say, you know, what do you, what do you do for a living? You know, or, you know, you ask, you know, mm -hmm. what do you do? I'm, I'm a teacher, you know, the, but they don't never ask, you know, well, why, why do you do it? Right. And dig a little bit deeper. And because our teachers are passionate, you know, they know they have a tremendous purpose. And I think that it's always good to remind, you know, educators of the impact that they have on the students in their classroom to kind of never lose sight of that. And I think that based on what I've learned about you, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm pumped for you to come in and meet our staff there. I'm pumped. I'm <laughs> pumped. Like, I, you know, that, that this, this is a really important thing for me. I actually feel that I've gotten better over the years because I've been open to going to these places and learning. And I'm like, listen, I'm like, oh my God, this is gonna be awesome, right? Like this is just like the stuff that you're already doing there is pretty incredible. So it is a really great opportunity. You know, I hope I have some, you know, insights and some ideas that will benefit your district, but like I already know that I'm gonna, I'm gonna get better from this day, which is, you know, really, really powerful. You know, we could talk all day, I know, but you, you know, you have to run a school <laughs> district and. I don't know. Really I'm like going to go swimming or something after. I don't know. But, you know, yeah, yeah, I play ice. <laughs> just making fun of ice hockey, right? You have one of the best teams ever, a dynasty there in New York. Not, they haven't been good since, you know, I was five, but they were pretty good then. So, but I am so pumped. And so uh, I can't wait to meet your staff. I can't, you know, it's going to be awesome to connect with you in person. So, I just, I love doing this because it just makes me more excited to, to join these places. So it, it, I can't wait to be with y'all. Same here, George. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a blast. Well, hey, thanks everyone for listening. Jordan, thanks so much for being on the podcast. I, I can't wait to see you all. Looking forward to it.